From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. It's one of the worst drunk driving rates in the nation. Now a new drug being introduced into the impaired driving mix just ahead. Learn how marijuana might make Montana roads even less safe. Body cams are becoming more popular for law enforcement agencies across the entire country. I'm Gabby Krevit and coming up, we'll talk to a few local agencies to hear their experience with the cameras. Well, 630 for you on this snowy Monday. And first, uh, Chet, we have some other news to pass along. Yep, uh, Superintendent Dan Johnson uh, from uh, the Shields uh, Valley Schools uh, telling us uh, K through five, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, or through the sixth grade, no school today, uh, heat problem, which means the heater's probably not working. Seventh through 12th graders in the Shields Valley will have school as normal. So. It's good that they caught that before the kids actually. A absolutely school, true. So. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than a cold, cold lunch. <laughs> that's how that's going to be. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and it is cold uh, anywhere looking east of the divide. Most of those area temperatures are down below zero. Uh, one below in Livingston, nine below in Big Timber. Uh, looks like our temperatures this afternoon aren't going to warm up dramatically. We are seeing some scattered snow showers in parts of the area and we'll will continue. It's not heavy, but it is persistent and will probably make an impact. Again, very cold temperatures. It's going to be hard to get rid of a lot of that snow that's on the ground. I do expect to see some visibility issues for the morning and slick conditions for the afternoon. We'll talk more about the deep freeze that's coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Matt. Well, now to news. We begin this half hour with an MTN special report. As pot becomes legal in Montana, law enforcement are trying to nip one aspect of it in the bud. In a state already plagued with a drunk driving epidemic, new projections say DUIs could increase due to pot use. MTN's Andrea Lutz investigates why some say Montana's new pot measure is a law with gaping holes. I was working in this school zone here. Here on Polly Drive. Just looking for speeders, really. Officer Eric Schnellback watches. Uh, he admitted to smoking just before driving. As a member of a specialized traffic enforcement team, he's usually watching for speeders. He kind of started to realize that maybe he was impaired. But one school day morning. Has the same dangers as alcohol. He found himself stopping someone driving high on pot. You know, I think he knew that he couldn't do it, but he didn't realize that he was impaired. I think it's just a big awareness issue with people not knowing how little it takes. As of January 1st, it's no longer illegal for recreational use with some guidelines. Montanans over the age of 21 can possess an ounce of marijuana. But when it comes time to prosecute illegal activity still associated with pot use, that's where things get complicated. There were some gaping holes in this initiative that are already causing me concern. And because of that, Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twido says they're trying their best to prepare for a surge in DUI cases. Once it gets up and going, we're looking at 2,700 more DUIs per year statewide, which is a huge number, if it comes close to that, even less than that would be a lot for local law enforcement agencies to take on. A recent Montana Department of Justice study says Montana could see a 77% increase in DUI cases, taking into an account a similar increase seen in Washington state after pot was legalized there. Uh, despite what people think, I mean, it is going to lead to an increase in DUI events. That takes resources, right? That takes officers, that takes prosecutors. I gotta put prosecutors in courtrooms. It's not even a penalty right now for someone over the age of 21 to give their marijuana to someone over the age of 18. So let's look at what's happening in nearby states where pot has become legal. In Colorado, a study found fatalities have increased since 2014, with an additional 75 deaths a year. But meanwhile, in Washington state, the same report says traffic-related deaths have remained relatively stable. Proponents of the marijuana measure say it's going to be up to lawmakers in Helena to take charge in defining the way impaired driving is prosecuted. You know, we made some recommendations in the initiative and, uh, you know, we hope that the spirit of those carries through to the legislature. And that Pepper they, Peterson you know, is president of the Montana Cannabis Guild and says the measure was designed to allow local governments to spend some portion of marijuana tax dollars including supporting local law enforcement. A false dichotomy is sometimes drawn that, you know, the people who support marijuana legalization don't support safe communities. And that's just false. 
Um, I think that most of the people I know that are marijuana consumers are good citizens and they're good people. While research has shown Montana's new legal pot law could bring in as much as $50 million a year in revenue, by comparison, new numbers show Montana's seen over $100 million in medical marijuana sales in the first three quarters of 2020. You know, we're starting to think about, um, you know, how, how this money can be used first to offset any potential harm that it may do. I don't think the problem is ever going to, to uh, with marijuana is ever gonna reach the proportions that it has with alcohol. But hands down, when it comes to driving under the influence of pot, Peterson says. Listen, if you plan on driving when you're high, then you're gonna get busted for that. And uh, that's what we encourage the police. We wanna make sure those resources were available so they could go out there and uh, you know make sure our seat streets were safe. Back on the streets where officers deal with it. Just cause you feel okay to drive doesn't mean that you are safe to drive. There's been studies that show impairment up to 24 hours after ingesting marijuana. Officer Schnellback says just like alcohol, sometimes it's hard for people to know their limits. And it all just depends on how much they ingest, how they ingest it. So he'll continue to watch. And the small differences it makes in someone's body could be the, the matter of some kid's life, you know, in the school zone. And educate drivers. Their ability to react to whatever. To protect our most vulnerable. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Now, the same field sobriety test for alcohol applies to those driving under the influence of drugs. However, pot is measured in nanograms. Five nanograms is considered over the legal limits. In other law enforcement news, uh, body-worn cameras on law enforcement officers becoming more common across the country. In a three-part series, MTN's Gabby Krevit talks to a few Montana agencies leading the charge as a Montana city prepares to invest in the technology. And civil rights and racial equity. Uh, instigate, uh, investigate what the technology means for community trust and justice. Calls for police reform and racial justice reached a new high in 2020. Along with that came calls to defund the police and calls for more police oversight. MTN News reached out to local agencies to hear their take on how body-worn cameras fit into the discussion about community safety and justice. All of our officers are intending to do their very best on everything and they discovered that these body cameras show that. Belgrade Police Department was the first to invest in the cameras in Gallatin County 10 years ago. The original intent was to get more evidence for DUI stops, but it became apparent quickly the cameras served an even bigger purpose. It was really, really nice just to know that it's not just my word, right? I mean, I absolutely have uh, you know, documented evidence of everything that happens when it comes to citizen contacts. Not far from town, the Montana State Police Department invested in body cameras as well. What we've seen over uh, the last several years is a, is a call for more accountability, more transparency. So the body-worn cameras certainly um, serve that purpose. Uh, they all, oftentimes will promote better behavior by not only the, the citizens, but also the, the officers themselves. UPD Chief of Police Kevin Gilliland says they're useful for training as well, but acknowledges some limitations. The thing that's important to remember about the body-worn camera is that you are limited in some respect to the field of view the camera has. So you're not getting every aspect of a situation, but it's certainly providing you um, with a good bit of detail. Because of that, Belgrade PD decided to take the technology a step further and invest in weapon cameras. Anytime we draw our pistol is probably the thing that we want to capture the most. And unfortunately, with body cameras that are stuck to your chest right here, when you point your weapon out, your hands block most of that footage. So you can't actually see what's going on that's leading the officer to make the decisions that he's making. Body-worn cameras alone cost around $1,200 a piece. Both Belgrade and MSU Police Department tell me that's the cheaper part of the equation. The storage of hours and hours of video is where things start to get expensive. I asked Detective Sharp about his thoughts on the intersection between more police oversight when it comes to body cams and calls to defund the police. They want us to invest in technologies to hold police accountable, which most police officers that I know are fully in support of technologies like this, while at the same time cutting budgets. It's difficult for us to be able to deal with those defund the police um, 
movement because of that split request. Later in this series, we'll hear from racial equity and civil rights advocates about their stance on body cams on law enforcement officers in Montana. Reporting in Gallatin County, Gabby Krevet, MTN News. Now tomorrow, Gabby will be talking to interim of Bozeman Police Chief Jim Veldkamp about how his city is preparing for the possibility of body-worn cameras and the steps needed to involve the community. Well, on the national front, the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump begins tomorrow. So what should we expect on Tuesday and how will this be different from the first trial? Our Joe St. George is in Washington and he explains. He's out of office, but back in the spotlight. Tuesday, the second impeachment trial of former President Trump begins. The biggest difference between his last trial and this one is perhaps the most obvious one. Former President Trump is no longer in office and his lawyers will repeatedly argue that fact throughout this trial to make the case this shouldn't be happening at all. But there are other differences as well. Big change number one, Chief Justice John Roberts will not preside. Instead, Senator Patrick Leahy, the president pro tem of the Senate, will. He gets that responsibility because he is the longest serving Democratic senator. Big change number two, what's at stake? The first time President Trump was facing removal from office. This time he's facing a potential ban from ever running for office again. He could also lose post-presidential perks like his yearly salary or staff, which is paid by taxpayers. Big change number three, senators are not just jurors this time. But this is a very different case. Democratic Representative Jason Crow was a House impeachment manager, essentially the prosecutor, during the 2020 Senate trial and has spoken with the congressman who will attempt to convict Mr. Trump this time. You're actually trying uh, a case involving crimes and you're trying it in front of jurors, in this case the senators, who are victims of the crime. And the prosecutors, the House managers, were also victims of the crime. One other change is the trial may not last as long. 17 Republican senators will need to join 50 Democrats in order to convict, and preliminary votes indicate Democrats may not have the votes. The White House is also pressuring the Senate to not delay President Biden's agenda. Former President Trump's first impeachment trial lasted 21 days, and the former president has indicated he has no plans on testifying. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. And all of that kicking off tomorrow. Right, a lot of uh, historic event to watch for sure. No kidding. Well, yep. coming up here on Montana this morning, it could be the latest way to keep tabs on the pandemic. Coming up, learn how some scientists are working on a COVID-19 breathalyzer. Just ahead, learn when it might be ready and how much it will cost. But first, let's check in with our friends at CBS this morning to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning. Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are Super Bowl champs. Bucks defensive lineman and Dominican So tells us what the victory means to him. Plus only on CBS this morning, singers Jasmine Sullivan and her talk with us about creating powerful patriotic moments with their Super Bowl performances. And Nora O'Donnell joins us with more of her exclusive interview with President Biden, his first network TV interview since taking office. All that coming up. And we see you at 7.